Hey, welcome back, guys. Power Book 4's ninth episode served as a rallying cry for the inevitable war to come in the season finale. Aptly titled Trust, this installment saw our characters ironing out their respective loyalties and questioning others. Deception was on the menu in abundance this go-round, and an appetizer for the buffet of blood coming in episode 110. I'm here to break it all down in typical top 10 WTF fashion. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. And lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. WTF moment number 10, Shell Shock. Vic is understandably shaken following the shooting that claimed his lover's life, and his father appears quickly to pick up the pieces. During his consolation of his only son, he gathers that Tommy warned Vic against him and his intentions for Gloria, intentions that were subverted by Pauly as was revealed in 108. In a last-ditch effort to regain his son's trust and undying loyalty, the desperate patriarch suggests that it was Tommy behind the violent hit, implementing his knowledge of the counselor's prior liaison with Gloria to his advantage. Initially apprehensive, a vulnerable Vic takes heed to his father's insidious words and repledges his allegiance to his family as a result. Unquestioned at that, WTF moment number nine, choose wisely. Claudia attempts to make sense of her father's bombshell claims that Tommy is the culprit behind Vic's hit and Gloria's death. During an exchange with her brother to hash out the details, Walter mysteriously interrupts and forces his daughter's hand in the name of loyalty and blood. He then concludes their interaction with what Obi-Wan Kenobi once deemed applicable to a burgeoning Sith Lord, an absolute. You're either with us or against us, exclaimed the desperate Flynn family head. This position only served to manipulate Claude further in an effort to reclaim her undying loyalty as well in concert with Vix, something that would unfortunately be achieved by episode's end. WTF moment number eight, you called who? JP, now working with his formerly estranged brother in the lab, thanks Tommy for the fruitful opportunity. Then, he reveals that he contacted their mother, something that sends Tommy over an emotional cliff. He furiously rebukes his brother for tampering with the past, blaming it more on selfishness than righteousness. WTF moment number seven, Enter the Four Horsemen. Walter, driving comfortably on Manipulation Avenue this episode, enlists outside assistance for the pending war effort. Sending Pauly to greet the seasoned killers, the foursome are introduced to us in grand fashion, equipped with heavy artillery and emotionless mugs to match. WTF moment number six, my brother's creeper. Jannard and Blackston go over their insidious plans to overthrow Diamond and permanently take over the CBI, though more the former than the latter. During their clandestine schemery, Diamond eavesdrops on the entire conversation one that also reveals Jannar's plots against his brother throughout the entire season. Then, the elder Samson chooses to mentally respond upon immediately seeing the two, playing it off as if he didn't hear a thing, yet internally crushed by what he knows is coming in regards to his blood. WTF moment number five, the tipping point. Bennigan surprisingly confronts Diamond at gunpoint, on the brink of desperation due to the extortion plot by one of his own. He makes Diamond ante up 100K, but the conscientious drug lord eases the process by appealing to Bennigan's internal desires for virtue over penance. Once the dirty cop reveals the extortion, Diamond chooses to square things between them, supplying an additional 50K to what he's asking for. WTF moment number four, the Serb who sat by the door. Following Diamond's refusal to assist Tommy in the simmering war, the Chancellor appeals to a familiar foe for an army. He pays Mirkovich and the Serbs a visit and requests soldiers for protection. Additionally, he reveals who's after them, along with paying a hefty $1.5 million fee. Tommy then throws in an extra 500K for the name of Gloria's killer, who he savagely disposes of in the name of his lost lover. This isn't Tommy's first Serbian alliance, as back in New York, he and Vladimir shared a glorious underworld partnership, one that was ended unceremoniously by the legendary Ghost Man at the conclusion of season two. WTF moment number three, dangerous connection. Marshall approaches DMAC in the spirit of contrition and reveals that the CBI excluded him from the cousin buddy deal. Upon accepting his apology, DMAC concocts a plan to go directly to buddy themselves, 
offering a link to the true supplier of Chicago's new drug of choice. The erratic buddy agrees to deal with the youngsters under certain terms and promises death if they aren't met in full. WTF moment number two, Uncle Tom. DMAC ecstatically reveals to Tommy that he subverted Jannard's Gary effort and took it upon himself to connect Tommy to the strange land and dealer. Tommy chastises his new protege and emphasizes the potential jeopardizing of his bright future by the foolish moon. Then he makes something known that we have understood for quite some time now, his familial connection to DMAC. Upon finding out, DMAC ups the banger on his uncle but settles his emotions in order to hear the full story from his distant relative, now brought closer. In WTF moment number one, DMAC's reckoning. Immediately following the big reveal, Tommy and DMAC decide to break the news to JP as a family. However, on their way to disseminate the news, an unknown car pulls up on them and begins blasting with reckless abandon, something we've seen quite a lot of this season, even killing one of the culprits, but the damage was done. DMAC ended up getting hit, Though not fatally on the surface, Tommy rightfully contacted JP in the aftermath of the shooting and made the long-awaited news clear to his brother, who understandably took it painfully, now with his son's life in the balance. If Jannar was indeed behind this hit, as suggested by his conversation with Blackston, then the war is on in a big way between him and Tommy and could potentially bridge the remaining gap between Tommy and Diamond once they exchange notes on Nardo's respective treacheries. Some lingering thoughts before we end today's video. The title of this episode was Trust, and it was heavily in question on all sides with our various characters. Walter reestablished his family's trust while simultaneously violating it. Marshall seemingly made amends with DMAC in the trust department. Jannard permanently violated Diamond's trust in him, devastatingly so in fact. And Tommy's trust was tried with his own brother in the negative due to the DMAC and Kate revelations, respectively. There will be much to answer for in the season finale, and not much time, unfortunately, due to the imminent war and only 60-minute window. The two large revelations this episode ran parallel in their delivery upon a closer viewing. JP interrupted Tommy's near-revealing of the DMAC connection with his own surprise via the Kate Egan contact attempt, and DMAC's excitement in the ill-advised Gary move interrupted Tommy's try to unveil his true connection to him prior to the temporary blow-up and subsequent shooting. It was a dope display upon a second glance, and though it all finally came out in the end, hopefully it wasn't too late for this fractured family seeking solidification. Claudia really played herself in this episode and ultimately ruined her chance at independence in the name of loyalty under false pretenses. Her demeanor, emotional reactions, and maneuvers during this episode only proved one thing. Claudia never really wanted freedom. She only wanted her father's acceptance and approval. It's similar to those who would profess the desire for freedom only to close the proverbial door to the house once finally being let in by the establishment. In this case, her father's the establishment and she's the oppressed entity, long being shut out and ecstatic at finally being allowed inside. Her quickness to switch up on a viable business relationship due to what basically amounted to a rumor is the best definition of weak and ironically highlights the very thing that kept her father from elevating her in the first place. She has more ambition than good sense and her emotionally driven actions only prove Walter's initial biases on women in leadership instead of debunking them. What exactly did Diamond do to Bennigan's sister? Did he cause her cancer? They have alluded to such events prior to the show and they definitely share a complicated history. Hopefully, those 150 bands restart their own trust woes, and Bennigan becomes a friend to Diamond's plight rather than an enemy. Speaking of that malicious attempt, Diamond overpaid Bennigan during the robbery, not only because of his moral compass and ever-growing compassion for the road cop circumstances and his insinuated former transgressions against him, but also to simultaneously weaken his brother's treacherous position. He understands how capital is the foundation to any coup. Being a student of classic literature, and war as a byproduct of his time inside, cutting his brother at the knees while clearing his conscience. It'll be interesting to see how that factors into Jannar's duplicitous efforts in the finale. While we're on Diamond, I think his lack of commitment to Tommy's war effort is due to the precarious situation of his own. Diamond's in the midst of a civil war against his own brother, one that eluded his sights up until now, and you never fight a war on two fronts. Understanding this internal strife, it would be impossible to lend Tommy any soldiers due to lack of trust in them 
or their true puppeteer, his overly ambitious younger brother. However, I do believe that the two former allies will meet each other again before the epic conclusion to secure their respective interests. Tommy against Walter and Diamond against Jannard. We'll see how these predictions pan out. And lastly, the four horsemen give off the departed vibes for those who are fans of the 2006 hit film. Similarly dealing with the subject of Irish mobsters, these cats don't look like they're to be played with. And it'll be interesting to see them in action now that the war is officially on. And that'll do it for this one. What were your thoughts on trust? Be sure to drop me your opinions in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share it with your friends who are power fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.